Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to perform some extra capabilities with pivot table slicers. Now slicers are an extended capability to let you uh, filter pivot tables. Now there's some additional things that you can do with slicers. Uh, this, is a, this is an example of a slicer. Basically it's more of a visual capability to do filters. Now what we can do is we can do some enhanced sorting with a slicer. We can also uh, do some enhanced filtering and I'll show you how to have a search capability with a filter, uh, with a slicer. So you can see that there's no search capability here as part of the slicers, but I'll show you how that's done. So there are the three examples that I'm going to show. Uh, this first example is a sort capability. Now you would notice that when you create a filter, and I'll create one later on from scratch, the sorting of the filter is predefined alphabetically but what if you had to uh, have a custom sort now for these values in uh, the season uh, header field we have spring summer fall and winter but in the default setting this would be in alphabetical order either ascending or descending depending on how you wanted it but you noticed here that uh, this is set based on the starting season of a typical year, spring, summer, fall, winter, how people would usually um, uh, arrange the seasons. You notice that it's uh, set up that way, not set up alphabetically. If it was set up alphabetically, you would have fall come first and then winter come last. And of course, spring and summer is second and third. But we can set this up with a custom list. Now, this is an example that I'll show later on, but we have another example in this particular example where we are enhancing our filter. So say for example we have a list of names here. Now if I go ahead and control down arrow you'll see that there are over 400 names. There's about 400 names here. And if we created a slicer for that and we wanted to kind of just go through and look at the slicer, go through and kind of pick out a name or set of names, even though it's in alphabetical order, it takes a long time. What we can do is create a kind of a enhanced uh, filter or another slicer that kind of helps filter it down. So for example, let's say I'm looking for somebody that starts with the letter M. So I can just click on that. And you can see all the names that start with the letter M kind of get percolate, kind of percolate up in this particular slicer. So there's a way to do that. The third example I'm going to show is how to create a search field within uh, a slicer. Now this idea I got from uh, John Acampora. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. He has a YouTube channel called Excel Campus and it's, he's got a pretty good video regarding how to create a search capability. Basically it's a workaround or a hack to create search capability with a slicer. So uh, I'll give him credit for this and he actually had a great workaround to do this. And so what you can do is you can create another pivot table, kind of put it behind the slicer, and it gives the impression that you have this search capability. So if I search for uh, any of the names that contain uh, MIC, you'll see that it all shows up here. And if I click OK, uh, it shows up here in my particular pivot table. So these are the three examples that I'll show you how to enhance your slicers via sorting, via filtering, and via search capability. So here I'm going to present the first example where we are uh, introducing a custom uh, list or custom uh, sorting list. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, fil a pivot table out of this first. I click anywhere within this range of cells, go and insert and pivot table. And I'm just going to put the pivot table within this particular worksheet here. So I'm going to put it here in cell uh, E3 and click OK. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the date in the row section and I'm going to put the season over here in the columns. And what I'm going to do here is also put the date into the value section So because I wanted to count the dates, count how many dates uh, are representative of either fall, spring, summer, or winter. And I'll go ahead and also group these. So I want to have the group, I want to group these by year and I'm going to group them by uh, month. So I'm going to write Right, right click, select any, any cell here in the rows in the uh, day column, right click and then go to group and I'm going to have it grouped by months and I'm also going to press the control key and have it grouped by years. So once I click OK, you'll see that the years show, show up here and the months show up here. Right now this is in compact format so I'm going to go ahead and change this table display into the uh, report layout which is tabular format so it has the years in one column and the dates in the other column. So you notice here, now it shows me that uh, there are uh, 31 days in January, uh, there's 28 days uh, of winter 
that are in February and 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 for March we have 12 days that are part of spring and 19 days that are part of winter. I can I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this uh, grand total column. I don't need this for this particular example, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that and also get rid of any subtotals. Right. So as you notice now, uh, you'll see that the seasons it falls under a alphabetical sort: fall, spring, summer, winter. And if I go into seasons here and I want to do a a sort here, if I go Z to A, you notice it goes of course backwards. But if I wanted to have a sort where it showed spring, summer, fall, and winter, we would have to create a custom sort. Well, actually, let me go ahead and put the slicer into this table first. So I click on pivot table. I go under analyze. I go under insert slicer. I'm going to insert slicers for the season and click OK. And let me go ahead and drag this over here. And now you notice after I inserted the slicer, it has um, sorted this based on alphabetical order. F comes before S, of course. And if we had our slicer settings, we click on our slicer settings here, and we did uh, descending, it would just become uh, winter would come first. So there's not really an easy way if we wanted to have this, uh, say, spring, uh, summer, uh, fall, and winter to do this within the slicer settings. What we need to do is go under uh, the Excel options to take care of that. So what I need to do is go under File, go under Options, and then go to advanced. And under advanced, what I want to do is create a custom list. And I'm going to go here, click edit custom list. Now this is going to be a short list. So what I can do is I can click here and I can type I can type spring, uh, oops, and then enter, summer, enter, fall, enter, and then winter. And I can just click add. It will add it into my custom list. I can click OK to get out of that. Click OK to get out of that. And what I can do now is I can go under slicer settings and uh, let me go ahead and click on ascending A to Z. It's going to use the custom list when sorting. Click OK. And now you'll notice that it has actually changed now. I have spring, summer, fall, and winter. And if I try to use the custom sort here, it's going to do the same thing. Let me go ahead and see if uh, this worked. A to Z. We have spring, summer, fall, winter. And if I go backwards, we would have winter. Uh, let's see, winter, fall, summer, and spring. So basically what it's done for us is it's created a custom sort. So this is one way that we can do some uh, enhanced sorting and not rely on the alphabetical sort uh, based on our slicer here or our filter here. So that's uh, enhanced sorting or custom sorting for your slicer. So the next example I'm going to show is how to do some enhanced filtering. Uh, let me go ahead and go to example two here. So in this particular example, what I showed earlier was if we created a slicer for this, let me go ahead and just create a pivot table first and then put a slicer together. Instead of using the uh, ribbon, I'm going to go ahead and use a keyboard shortcut, Alt N V, and that's going to create the same window that we had earlier. What I'm going to do is also put the pivot table within this worksheet. I'm going to put it here in E3 again and click OK. And I'm just going to put the uh, name here and maybe the count of the quantity. So we have our summer quantity there. Let me go ahead and create a slicer for this. I'm under the, I click in the pivot table, go to analyze, and insert slicer. So let's insert a slicer for just the name. Click OK. And now you notice if I have my slicer here, it has a lot of names. There's 400 names here. So if I want to look for something, I kind of have to scroll all the way down to find something maybe in the N that starts with the N. And maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want something a little easier where I select something here and it filters out all the names that begin with the letter N. What I need to do is first go back into my source table and create a uh, easier way to do that. And so what I'm going to do is create a, a table or a column here, which I'm going to, I'm going to name first name. Right? And I'm going to use an Excel function called left. It's going to say equal left, and I'm going to go and press the tab key. And from this text, what I want is the first character, right? The number one. That's going to be the first character. I close the parentheses, press control, enter to stay in that cell, and it's giving me the first letter of the name, which is G. I'm going to go ahead and just double click the fill handle here, and it's going to copy the formula all the way down. So what I want to do now is I want to include that within this pivot table. Right now, the pivot table is only looking at columns A and B. So what I'm going to do is click on the pivot table, go to Analyze, go to Change Source Data, and it's going to bring up a, another window here. And it's going to say, uh, where do you want to change your source data? Right now, it's, go, it's from A1 to B401. So A1 to B401, way at the bottom. I wanted to include column C. So I'm going to go ahead and change that last letter there 
to say column C. So it's basically A1 to column C401. So basically here, A1 to all the way down to the bottom of the last uh, entry for column C, which is in row 401. Go ahead and click OK. And what I need to do now is refresh this pivot table. So I can just go ahead and click anywhere inside the pivot table, right click, and select refresh. Now what you'll notice now is it put the first name here. So what, I'm not going to put that in part of the pivot table. I'm just going to create another slicer from that. So I've got the pivot table, and I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I've got the pivot table selected here. I'm going to go under Analyze and Insert Slicer, and I'm going to insert the first name. So that's going to be another slicer now. Now by default, it's going to give you only one column uh, for that slicer. I can change that. So the column I can have here is I can say, okay, maybe we want more columns because the letters are so their letters are small, and that column width doesn't need to be that wide. So I'm going to go ahead and increase it probably to five. One, two, three, four, and five. And now I can kind of adjust the slicer to make it a little bit smaller. So if I wanted to use my slicer to pick out names from the table anywhere, anything that started with the letter M, I can click on M. And now you notice in the second slicer, all the M's kind of percolate up to the top, and they're in a solid blue color. If you notice, if I scroll down, uh, all the other names are kind of, uh, they've lost their the solid blue color, and it's a little bit lighter, so indicating that you can't select those. So that's another way that we can enhance our slicers by extending the sorting capabilities. Basically, we're adding another column to enable that sort. So the third example I'm going to show now is how we can add search capabilities to a slicer. Let me go into uh, tab 3 here, my example 3. And what I'm going to do is also create a pivot table out of this by using the keyboard shortcut Alt and V. Let me go ahead and just put it within my uh, sheet here. I'm going to use E3 here, the same thing as I did earlier. Click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add my name here and the sum of quantity, same thing as I did earlier. Uh, so I didn't want to count a quantity. I'm going to go ahead and click the drop down here, uh, value field settings, and click on sum and click OK. And so it's giving me the quantity of those names that show up. So what I want to do now is also create the uh, slicer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on insert slicer, and I want to have that name there. Click OK, and I'm going to have it right here. So now you notice that. Uh, my names, still the same thing we have. Our list of names is pretty huge. And what I want to do is I want to create that uh, search box. The workaround to this, or the hack, is basically creating another pivot table. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this range, uh, Control C to copy, and select this range, Control V to paste. And this basically is another pivot table within this worksheet. Let me go ahead and uh, click here. And what I want to do here is maybe I don't want to have uh, I don't need to have the quantity there, but and I'm going to move the name up to this filter here. And so what that does is I can go ahead and just change that, uh, move the location of that. Let me go ahead and it, select that. It turns into a four uh, a four sided arrow uh, cursor. Let me go ahead and just move this down over here to a nice spot here, right? If you look at the drop down, if I click on that drop down, there's this search bar capability, right? And so what I can do is I can have this in front of it, and I can just kind of gently place this over it. And what happens now is I've kind of simulated a search capability for this particular slicer. Really, it's just another pivot table that's hidden behind the slicer. So I can go ahead and click on this. If I want to search for any of the names that contain a CHR, that will show up all the names that contain CHR. Click OK, and now you notice that the pivot table has the same thing there. And so there's some things that you have to be aware of when you create these uh, uh, pivot tables uh, under the slicer. Sometimes changes within the pivot table uh, adjust the, uh, the width of the uh, columns. So what I want to do here, let me go ahead and move this slicer out here. I'm going to go ahead and select this pivot table, right click, and go to pivot table options. And I'm going to uncheck this auto fit columns on that update. So basically what it does is, depending on the length of the name, it's going to adjust the column sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to put this back here. And if we picked a longer name, let's say, uh, let me pick a longer name, maybe something, uh, Fernando. That looks like a longer name than Christian. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and type F-E-R uh, N-A-D-O, select that, click OK. Now that hasn't changed. The width hasn't changed. 
because what happens with pivot tables is uh, when you adjust some of the, or you update some of the information in the pivot table, uh, depending on how long the characters are, it may adjust your column links. So we've adjusted that right now. So uh, depending on uh, where you place the slicer in front of the in front of this particular uh, filter, it will not change the width anymore. So if I had another longer name, let me see if there's anything much longer than that. This looks like a long name over here, uh, Dominique. So if I change it to Dominique, it will not change uh, this particular width of this column. So I'm going to go ahead and type Dominique Dom, right? And click OK. You now you notice it doesn't change, but it picked up Dominique in the pivot table here. So there you go. There's three examples of how you can create some enhanced filters. Uh, first, with uh, creating a custom sort list. Uh, the second one shows how we can use a, another filter to kind of narrow down uh, a secondary filter. And then the third is adding search capability to a filter. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.